Gus for the call. Joe Flack, Gus Johnson. Big News Saturday is sponsored by AT&T Business from McLean Stadium in Waco, Texas. We're ready for two of the top teams in America as the eighth-ranked Oklahoma Sooners come into town undefeated, ready to take on the Sikkim Baylor Bears. Hi, everybody. I'm Gus Johnson along with my quarterback, Joel Klatt, and welcome to Waco. Oklahoma comes into this game rolling and why because during the Red River shootout they made a quarterback change yes. they brought a young man from Washington DC Gonzaga right. High School into the game Caleb Williams and the rest has turned out kind of rosy for I, tell, I mean it's been like a rocket ship you know I tell you this this offense has totally transformed under Caleb Williams and it's been his ability to run the football and make explosive plays with his legs that has led them to throwing the ball so much better down the field utilizing the play action and then their run game outside of Williams has really taken off as well namely Kennedy Brooks 89 rush yards per game this guy is terrific folks I cannot wait to see what he does in a huge matchup in November let's see how he plays down the stretch when all the chips are on the table as for the Baylor Bears they're coming off a loss to TCU a game that they felt that they should have won but they have a terrific running back with a linebackers mentality <laughs> in Abram Smith that's because he was a linebacker <laughs> last right. year he averaged about 10 tackles per game spring football they're like we need some toughness on the offensive side what should we do let's take Abram over there and give him the ball as a running back he was a high school running back this guy has been absolutely terrific this is 7.3 yards per rush, third in college football. He's given toughness and aggressiveness to that offense. That's the identity that they need for the upset today against the Oklahoma Sooners. All right, time now to join the third member of our team. On the sideline, the All-American girl, Jenny Tack. Well, guys, championship November has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Especially when you've been living up to the name. Lincoln Riley has never lost a game in the month of November, and that has become an expectation for the Sooners. Captain Pat Fields told me that championship November isn't necessarily something that we say. It's something we feel. We feel it in the intensity of practice. We feel it walking around the building. It is our job to keep the tradition going. But ironically, the Baylor Bears are the last team to beat the Sooners in the month of November in 2014 and they're feeling confident today and as for a possibility of an upset these fans storming the field no one is worried about it including athletic director Mac Rhodes who said if we upset the Sooners I will be storming the field right there alongside all of our fans well you better be careful Jenny Tapp if they do storm the field make sure you get out of the way how about this weather folks 58 degrees and sunny kickoff time we're in November Oklahoma won the toss they elected to receive the football in a series that dates back to 1901 a meeting here in Waco Oklahoma leads it and the Sooners have won seven in a row Marvin Mims ready to return it for Oklahoma big game for these Sooners can they remain undefeated? A college football playoff berth is on their minds. And here we go. Baylor, OU, into the end zone for a touchback. And that'll bring on Caleb Williams, a freshman from Washington, D.C., and he's got some magic in him. Well, the magic has been apparent. Remember the 66-yard scamper on fourth down against Texas? That totally transformed their season. But really, two seasons, OU and Texas. But Gus, I think it's just his competitive nature. You can tell that this guy, it doesn't matter what he's playing, what the score is, he, he is going to play with that dog mentality of just wanting to beat you across that line of scrimmage. And that's what I love about it. It's not always the prettiest, but man, he's got a lot of talent and a competitive attitude. Put up some gaudy numbers last week. 400 yards passing on first down. Kennedy Brooks, and he's chased down by Jalen Petrie. Let's take a look at this Oklahoma offense. They've been much better since Williams has been the quarterback, but it really has been the offensive line and getting the run game started that has allowed them to have so much more success, in particular throwing the ball down the field. Last game out. Now, they've had an off week, but last game out. Marvin Mims, Mario Williams, both huge days. And that's one of the weaknesses of this Baylor defense is their pass defense. Second down at 14 of the 21. Williams wants to run it. Bouncing around. Now reverses. 
And Williams in trouble, and he's ambushed inside the 15. J.T. Woods and this Baylor defense, excuse the pun, they're ready for Bear. <laughs> this, this defense has been pretty good this year. Folks, they're coming off their worst performance, and they desperately want to get that bad taste out of their mouth. The guy you need to be prepared for and watching all day is number eight, Jalen Petrie. He's one of the best defenders in the entire country. OU talked about him all week, about having to know where he is on the field at all times. So a loss of four, a loss of six, third and 20 at the 15 for Oklahoma on their opening series. Here comes a blitz. They stay on the ground, and they won't get much. What a terrific opening defensive series for Baylor. Bryson Jackson leading the way. And it was our guy as well, Petrie. Watch Petrie as he's just going to come in here. He'll be the first guy that gets there, doesn't make the tackle, but slows down Brooks enough for his teammates to rally up and make the tackle. And OU went absolutely nowhere, in fact, backwards on their first possession. Michael Turk will punt it from his own goal line. Treston Ebner is the deep man standing at the 36. No pressure. Turk gets it away toward the far sideline. And it's caught at the 36. And Ebner will walk up a couple of yards and go out of bounds. So that brings on Gary Bohannon, a junior. And Bohannon, the numbers last week, 14 of 20, 214 yards, threw three touchdowns, but a costly interception at the end of the game. What does he bring to the table? Well, he's, he's an ath athletic guy. He was recruited by most schools as an athlete coming out of high school, but he bet on himself. He wanted to play quarterback. He comes here to Baylor and does just that. He's had a marvelous season. The mistakes have crept up here in the last three games. Last week, those two interceptions, including on the last play for Baylor, really cost him a chance to win that game. He's desperate to come out here and play much better. First down and 10 at the 36. Bohannon to throw on first down over the middle. Guns it. He's got his receiver close to the first down marker. He put that one into the hands of Taekwon Thornton. And boy, is Taekwon Thornton a terrific receiver. He absolutely is. And this offensive line, they're greatly improved from a year ago a couple of transfers up there and then that offensive skill positions led by Abram Smith you talked about Tyquan Thornton but it's really the run game they open up with a pass but check out this wide zone folks you're going to see it early and often it's their bread and butter and they're very good at it first down and 10 and this time they run it over the right side with Estrada and Drew Estrada a sixth year senior from Argyle Texas will pick up five well, this defense is going to have their hands full because of that physical identity of the Baylor offense. They do get Jalen Redman back, and that allows Isaiah Thomas to move back out to that defensive end spot, which is more his natural position. They're going to be without Deshaun White, one of their linebackers. So here's the guys in the second level. Nick Benito needs to play well. And in the back end, they're healthier than they have been all year. Woody Washington will play today for Oklahoma. Second and five, Abram Smith. Checks in, play fake, Bohan, and sets up deep in the pocket with time, fires, and closest man to the football, and that was number 80, Baldwin, the intended receiver. Well, you're going to see movement, Gus, all day long from both of these units, defensively and offensively, before the snap. You're going to see shifting and motion from Baylor. And Alex Grinch, the coordinator for OU, loves to move around his defense. It's called stimming. You stim the defensive line late, and then they love to stunt as well. Third down and five at the 48. And they'll give it to Ebner over the right side, picking his way forward, and he will not pick up the first down. About a yard, yard and a half short of that marker, Isaiah Thomas defensively. Uh, this field position, you assume they'll go for it, and they will. The offense likely stay on the field here. I like this call from Dave Aranda, who's done a marvelous job here. The head coach of the Baylor Bears. This turnaround now 7-2 and two in his second season. And they'll go for it here on fourth down. 9-9 nine and nine overall, former defensive coordinator and national champion with the LSU Tigers. Fourth down and two at the 45. Abram Smith is the deep back out of the eye. And they'll give it to him. And he's bottled up, breaks a tackle, and picks up the first down and more. 
Abram Smith down inside the Oklahoma 40 yard line. DJ Graham with the stop. First down, Bears. Oklahoma got their guys into the backfield. I believe it was Benito, number 11. If you're going to watch Benito, he's going to be right upfield and he's got a shot right there while he's getting blocked. There's the strength of Abram Smith. He just shucks that block tackle off and he runs for a first down that's an excellent run right there on a fourth down looked like that play was going to get blown up Abram Smith 18 carries 125 yards last week against TCU first and 10 at the Oklahoma 40 opening series for Baylor play fake Bohannon on the short roll and he'll dump it incomplete Drew Estrada the target Another element to this offense that you just always have to be prepared for are those boot plays. You know, when they give the hard play action fake in the run game, then they get Gary Bohannon outside of the pocket. They're very good at that. But OU has been ready here early. Second and ten at the 40. Ebner in the backfield with Bohannon. Bohannon the throw over the middle. And it's caught. Beautiful throw, terrific catch, Tyquan Thornton, and that's a gain of 12. He had a huge day against TCU. Five catches, 121 yards, two touchdowns. That one was in traffic. Key Lawrence on defense. The transfer from Tennessee was in good position, but Thornton just grabbed that one right out of the air, and it's a first down Baylor. Three 100-yard games this season for Thornton. Eighth play of the drive, first and 10 at the 28. Smith and he'll push it forward and get to the 25 a gain of three I just love the way Smith runs it's so aggressive he's decisive cuts gets up field and then he gets behind his shoulder pads and delivers the blow to the defender and this guy is so selfless like I said earlier, Gus, he was a linebacker and having a great year last year. And in the middle of spring football, they say, hey, we need you on the offensive side, but it's going to be your decision. And he said, nope, wherever you need me, that's where I'm going to be at. Second and seven of the 25-yard line. Ebner back in. Bohannon looking. Bohannon tucks it. He's got a blocker. Cuts it back with the lane. Bohannon skips to the sideline. Lost it as he goes down. But Baylor should hold on to it at the 10. That's a 14-yard scamper for first down. There was nobody on that side of the offensive line for Oklahoma. Here's the end of the play. As you see, he goes down to the ground, knees down before that ball actually comes loose. Nice call by the official real time on the field. But a huge running lane on that side. And Gary Bohannon, who, by the way, his coaches have encouraged him, hey, use your legs. Be dangerous in the run game, and here on the first series, he's able to do that. First down and 10 of the 12, and they run it with Estrada. That didn't fool anybody. Oklahoma well-prepared. Caleb Kelly, the redshirt senior from Fresno with the tackle. Boy, this has been the exact start to the game that Baylor has wanted. Quick, lots of big plays on defense. Make Oklahoma go backwards, and then now a methodical drive from their offense, trying to take some time off the clock, establish the run game, get Gary Bohannon comfortable in the pocket and on the outside, which they've done. Second and 10 at the 12. Here's Bohannon. Let's it fly in the corner. Incomplete. Ebner out of the backfield was the target Asamoah in coverage for OU. Well, Baylor knew they were going to get a lot of man coverage and they were going to take some shots because of that. This is one of those shots down in the red area. Ebner just can't corral it in. He was in the backfield. He's one on one with Brian Asamoah and the ball just a little too far. So it's third and 10 of 12. Bears still with an opportunity to get a first down. Bohannon in trouble on the move turns it up Bohannon lowers his shoulder and gets tackled inside the five by Woody Washington he needed 10 he got eight so another decision coming up for coach Aranda you get the sense as we were talking with him yesterday didn't you Gus said he wasn't going to leave anything 
on the table. And here, he was aggressive earlier on the first drive, and he'll be aggressive again and go for it. Fourth down and two. Empty backfield for Bohannon. He's used his legs on this series. Bohannon. Incomplete. That one thrown well behind the intended target, Tyquan Thornton. And Baylor will have to think about the decision. Coming up, Oklahoma with the football. Time now for progressive game flow. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by AT&T Business, keeping your business connected with AT&T 5G. And by Progressive Insurance, save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Last week, four of the top 15 teams in the college football playoff rankings lost, including two undefeated teams, Wake and Michigan State. Oh, you trying to avoid that today? They'll take over at their own four-yard line. First down for young Caleb Williams. And they'll hand it off. And this is Knowles. Jaden Knowles, Richard Jr. Running left. We pick up a cup. Make that Kennedy Brooks. So you offense took their time getting loose in rhythm against Kansas played great against Texas Tech then had the off week trying to get out here and establish this run game and it's been slow going early second down and eight at the six yard line and the play action fake Williams sets up fires over the middle oh incomplete Drake Stoops the intended receiver and he got decked Christian Morgan hit him in the ribs Stoops pops up though, but he felt it. Boy, Stoops is a tough customer, there's no doubt, but his quarterback did not help him out on that. Ball is thrown a little late over the middle, and JT Woods is right there. And early in this game, these safeties, Woods, Petrie, they've been flying around the football. Third down and eight at the six yard line. Eric Gray checks in at running back. Caleb Williams looking for the first down with time dancing around his own end zone finally guns it and intercepted Baylor's got it Kalen Barnes this is a massive mistake from Caleb Williams that ball has got to get thrown away. He's trying to force it to Jaden Hazelwood, who's really his favorite target since he's been the starter. He's thrown it late. He's panicked. He's under pressure in his own end zone, and he throws it over the middle, and Baylor is there. Kalen Barnes picks it off. First down, Bears, plus side of the 50 when we come back. You still have a free chance to win $10,000 from Fox Super 6. Just scan the QR code now and enter the Big Noon Contest on the app. It's free to play. Enter now for your shot at $10,000. Third career pick for Barnes. His first this season. And that's Caleb Williams' second interception against 14 touchdown passes. Smith bottled up and will be taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Brian Asamoah, first man to him. Good fast flow there from Asamoah. This defense who got a hold on that first series on a fourth down inside the five now has to go back out there in a sudden change. This is when you find out everything that you need to know about the heart of your defense. It's a sudden change like this after a turnover. Great field position for Baylor. How does the Sooners defense react? Trips at the top of your screen. Second down and 11 from the 38 for Gary Bohannon. Bohannon option. Pitches it. Ebner up the sideline. Tiptoes out of bounds. He'll be close to the line to gain. Telling you, partner, we're seeing that old school option a lot more now. That's right, and you love it. Every single, every single time we see it, you, you love it. This is the read first to Estrada, then Bohannon pitches it off that end, and now it's one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and 
Delarian Turner Yell cannot bring Ebner down. Missed tackles. OU, when they struggle on defense, it's generally missed tackles in the open field that are the main culprit. And there's a missed tackle from Turner Yell against Ebner. Third down and one of the 28. And Ebner, this time, he is tracked down by Brian Asamoa. Shot out of a cannon. A loss of five. When I watch their defense, 24 late in the season arrives. He just keeps popping up, popping up. And you're like, man, Asamoah is playing so much more consistently in this back half of the year. The junior from Columbus, Ohio. And right there, that was a terrific play on a third down. Isaiah Hankins comes in to attempt a 51-yard field goal. He's a true freshman. He's made six of seven over the last eight games. He hooked it. No good. 4-10 to play in the first quarter. No score. Baylor OU from Waco. Time to celebrate Fansville and college football's return to glory with an ice cold Dr. Pepper. A one fan dessert. And good day. Set. Big dude. Kick off. No score right now. Baylor has run 15 plays in OU territory already. Nothing to show for. First down and 10 at the 33 for Oklahoma. Here's a reverse. Mims. Marvin Mims. And he'll run into a brick wall, but pick up. The first down in the process, Kalen Barnes with the tackle. That's a 14-yard game. One thing you know about Dave Aranda, as a head coach and even previous as a defensive coordinator, he's had Lincoln Riley's number two of the last three years, or excuse me, two of the lowest total yard totals in Lincoln Riley's tenure at Oklahoma have been Dave Aranda coach teams. The defense for LSU in the semifinal a couple years ago and last year, 2020, against this Baylor squad. Williams decides to run it. He'll go straight ahead. And gobbled up. Tackled by Gabe Hall, and it's a four-yard game. Coach Aranda, very interesting man. One of the more interesting coaches that I think I've ever met. He's a stoic. I think you're talking to Marcus Aurelius or Seneca. Here's Williams underneath. Stoops. And Stoops picks up the first down. Well, as soon as he said he, he studied philosophy in college, you lit up. And you were like, oh, I'm in now. You asked about his favorite philosophers and philosophy on football. It was, it was a terrific conversation. Williams showing his elusiveness. And what happened between Caleb Williams and Spencer Rattler? What was it that Rattler did to lose his job? And what was it that Caleb Williams did to keep the job? Well, I... Really, it boils down to turnovers. You know, Spencer was turning the ball over too frequently. It was hurting them in that Texas game. I also think that Williams gives them something from an athletic perspective in the run game that they weren't getting from Spencer Rattler. Thus, their run game has improved dramatically. That's also improved their play action pass. And you've got to give a lot of credit to Williams, but also Rattler for the way he's handled it. Here's Gray running over the right side. He'll get inside the 30. Five. Let's go above and beyond. Sponsored by Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Here's the difference, Gus, between Williams and Rattler. The first four games against FBS teams, they were only averaging 29 points. Last four, 49. You see the total yards, yards per play, but really it's the run game that's in, increased their passing ability. The passing yards per attempt has gone way up because of that play action pass. And this is one of those times where Williams is going to have to be efficient throwing the ball. Third down and four at the 34. Here's Caleb Williams. Williams standing strong in the pocket and incomplete. That one thrown a little bit low. Intended for Willis. And now Oklahoma will send out their special teams. This doesn't look comfortable, speaking of Caleb Williams now, throwing the ball. We've seen him throw the ball late. He's thrown an interception already right there. This is way behind his intended receiver and Willis can't come back and corral that one in. Gabe Burkage one for one against Texas Tech in their last game. 
He made a 53 yarder in the win the last time out against the Red Raiders. This one from 51. And no good. 126 to go. Nil, nil. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by Pacific Life. More than 150 years strong. Protect what matters most. The last time Baylor beat Oklahoma came in 2014. It was also the last time Oklahoma lost in the month of November. No score in our game right now. Spirited affair. First down and 10 at the 35 for Baylor. They have been able to move the ball on this Oklahoma defense. Have near the pistol. Bohannon. Looking. Bohannon. That one deflected at the line of scrimmage. Isaiah Thomas. Got a big hand on it. The redshirt senior from Tulsa. If he doesn't bat that down. R.J. Sneed was wide open behind him on the crossing route. There's the bat down. Wonderful play from Isaiah Thomas, who again gets to move out to defensive end because Jalen Redmond is back. They felt like their pass rush, their overall aggressiveness would improve today, and you're seeing that along that defensive line. Isaiah Thomas, 6'5", second and 10. Bohannon, option near side. This time, Ebner with a burst, and Ebner picks up the first. I really love the way Bohannon is playing because he's, he's been so decisive. He's playing with conviction. Even when he's throwing the football in those option plays, he sees his pitch key, ball is out to the running back. Nice positive game there and another first down for Baylor. That's a 13-yard run. Abram Smith now checks in at running back. First down. Bohannon. With time, throws the deep ball, he's got a man incomplete. Wow, Tyquan Thornton was open, and he was wide open, maybe two yards in front of the defender. I mean, you don't get wins like this much in big games, and these have got to be taken advantage of. Last week, they were able to hit some big plays down the field. Thornton had a huge day, five catches, 121 and two touchdowns, but there, Bohannon, just a hair out front. Oh. Second down and 10 to the 47. Here comes a blitz. Smith with a hole. Lowers his shoulder. Abram Smith. Gained seven on the play. Went over 1,000 yards rushing this season with a 125-yard outburst against TCU in their last game. It was his sixth. 100 yard game of the year. Doesn't look like they want to snap this ball. They'll think over this upcoming third down, Gus, at the quarter break. How about this, folks? End of the first quarter, no score. Oklahoma Baylor. Coming up, the second quarter, right after this. Big News Saturday is sponsored by AT&T Business McLean Stadium. Waco, Texas. Pacific Life Game Summary sponsored by Pacific Life. More than 150 years strong. OU not doing much offensively, folks. 26 total yards. Baylor has moved the ball, but mistakes at the end of possessions. Missed field goal, missed fourth down, missed a big play. Just a couple of snaps to go. On third down and three, Smith. Driving forward, and he'll pick up the first down. Aguebu with the tackle. I mean, this is the tough running that we're talking about. Watch Abram Smith. He gets contacted. Aguebu, though, leaves his feet, and Smith just drags him there. I mean, that's fantastic stuff from Abram Smith. 221 pounds. He comes in and just forces his way to a first down. Abram Smith, 5'11" to go along with those 221 pounds. Bohannon sets up on his back foot, delivers in triple coverage, and that is intercepted. Wow! 
Delarian Turner yell with the interception. Now each team has turned the ball over. It's really about Asamoah. And you're saying, what do you mean? Turner Yell got the pick. Watch Asamoah. He comes up to defend the run, and then he immediately sprints back, and now he eyes up the crossing route, and he's right there. So the crossing route stops, and Turner Yell is able to get over the top, and then he gets the pick. Turner Yell did a great job getting over the top, but it was Asamoah who intercepted the route first that allowed Turner Yell to go intercept the ball. What a great defensive play. How about that defense for OU? Yes, Baylor's been the ball but Gus the big play the ability to get off the field not giving up any points so far that OU defense has been terrific so far Bohannon with the sixth interception of the season he threw two in their last game against TCU first and ten at the 22 for Oklahoma Caleb Williams Steps up in the pocket, guns it down the sideline, and incomplete. Terrific coverage by Christian Morgan. He tracked that ball down while it was in the air. Marvin Mims, the intended receiver. I mean, Mims was open. Williams had to wait just a beat because of the pressure, and it allowed Morgan to get there maybe a hair early. He's still down, by the way, shaken up after the play but a huge play averted by that Baylor defense. Make sure to check out the Fox Sports 5G View app powered by Samsung Galaxy for interactive 4D views of today's game available only on 5G enabled Android devices. Oklahoma averages 477 yards a game, just 26 so far on 13 plays, second and 10 of the 22. Caleb Williams pulls it out. Williams looking, goes through his progressions. Look at the time now, steps up, wants to run it, and he'll get out of bounds. That OU offensive line giving them all day to throw the football. And they're going to try to go fast here on a third down and get a quick snap. Third down and five from the 27. Williams looking over the middle. And it's caught. First down. Michael Woods got a flag on the play. Well, it looked like both of these players had a hold of each other's face mask. Walcott, number 13, and Woods. Woods stiff-armed, it looked like, towards the face. But Walcott, it looked like, also grabbed the face mask of Woods. That's what they'll be chatting about here. Here's a look at it. Here's the stiff arm. It goes up to the face. Wow. Push off foul. Face mask. Defense number 37. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, that's the problem is that Walcott then pulls him down by the face mask, I guess. But that's, that's a good break for OU. It gets them going a little bit and gets them some momentum after Gus really the first rhythm style throw from Caleb Williams you know he he hasn't looked great so far today throwing the football I think they need to get to the run game and try to soften up that defensive front in the run game so that the play action pass is more open and Williams will throw it rolls out guns it to the sideline ball is caught Jeremiah Hall and it's a game of six. I love Jeremiah Hall, Austin Stogner, Braden Willis. These guys, these H-backs, tight ends, and Lincoln Riley loves them as well. It's been a staple of Lincoln Riley's offense for a long time at OU. A guy that can play fullback, tight end, H-back. It allows them to keep the same 11 guys on the field and yet change formations so drastically, and it's tough to defend. Second and four. Here's Kennedy Brooks this time. 
Brooks with the hard sprint to the sideline. Nice stiff arm. He'll go down close to the 20-yard line. A 17-yard run. Terrell Bernard, Devin Neal combining on the stop. Kennedy Brooks is so patient in that run game. So that's a play that they absolutely love where they're going to pull a, an offensive lineman around and an H-back who ended up being on the front side. But they pull both of those guys around. Okay, Kind of a GT play, they call it guard tackle or a couple of different pullers on that front side. But Brooks's patience is what makes that play so devastating. Longest play of the day so far for Oklahoma. First and 10 at the 20. And it's Brooks again. Running over the right side, Kennedy Brooks had two monster games last month. Career high 217 yards and two touchdowns against Texas, followed by 153 and a touchdown against TCU. Now they've gotten back to that run game a little bit, back to back, good carries. And then now when you get into this second and manageable, second and six right here, now the play action becomes more of a weapon for you because everyone's got to commit to stopping the run. Second down and six at the 16. Brooks. Oh, and he's hit in the backfield by guess who? Jalen Petrie. A loss of one. Love watching this guy play. He is the standard at Baylor. Here he's coming in. He's coming in kind of from this side of your screen. Here's number eight. And he just gets himself right into that hole. And Kennedy Brooks cannot get away from him. Now, he didn't tackle great last week, Petrie. But that was an excellent tackle of Brooks in the backfield. Brings up third down and seven at the 17 for the Sooners. Caleb Williams, their freshman quarterback, trying to find his rhythm. Eric Gray checks in at running back here on third down. They might need a timeout here. They get it away. Williams dumps it off. Gray. Stutter step. Nice move. Whoa. Eric Gray. Slippery. On third and seven, he picks up 15. And how about the block from Jaden Hazelwood? Number 11, that's what allowed Gray to have that move, Gus. Great move from Eric Gray right there, but it was the block from Hazelwood that basically takes up three bears, and he's able to get down the sideline and create a first down. So first down and goal for Oklahoma at the Baylor two. Kennedy Brooks back in. Williams running, hops and scores. Touchdown, Oklahoma. His fifth rushing touchdown of the season. How about this? An unselfish play. Watch Kennedy Brooks come out and get an absolutely great block on the edge right here. Leading rusher, boom, opens up a huge hole. Williams is able to just dance into the end zone, and OU goes on the board first. Burkage in to attempt the extra point. And it's good. Oklahoma, they go nine plays, covering 78 yards. Their quarterback, Caleb Williams, hopping in, and the Sooners take a 7 0 lead. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by Cerveza Dos Equis. Get a dose. Please drink responsibly. And by State Farm, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 7 0 Oklahoma, and that touchdown drive came after Delarian Turner Yell's third career interception. As you take a look, nine plays, 78 yards. For the Sooners, big plays on that drive, an 18-yard run by Brooks, a 15-yard catch and run by Gray to the two. So the Bears will get it back. Burkett sends it away. Ebner, the deep man, lets it go over his head and into the end zone. Tomorrow on Fox, Zeke and the Cowboys take on Matt Ryan and the Falcons or the Vikings take on Justin Herbert and the Chargers. Check local listings for the game in your area. Only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. I watched a lot of that Denver-Dallas game. That was crazy. Dallas was awful. It was 30 to nothing at one time. I turned it off, and they ended up with 16 points. The Falcons were playing well. They won four of their last five with your golfing buddy, Matt Ryan.
That is a stick, by the way. Yeah, you beat him all the time. From what I hear. <laughs> First and 10 at the 25. Nice try. And I'll get a text in three, two. <laughs> Bohannon threw an interception the last time he touched it. Now he's in trouble. Dances out of the pocket. Fires on the run. Nice throw. Beautiful catch. Ty Quan Thornton. They say, Joel, this young man out of Booker T. Washington High School in Miami is a Sunday player. Well, I, I believe it. 6'3", 182. He probably has room for about 5'10 more pounds. I like his speed. He catches it well in space. And when he's one-on-one -on -one and has a chance in those 50-50 opportunities, he generally comes down with the ball. First down at the 35. Smith in the backfield with Bohannon. Sims in motion. Timeout, timeout. Baylor, they're first Baylor, in the draft. All right, Baylor calls a timeout, trying to get organized. We'll step away back in a moment. Free to play, Fox Bet Super 6 app. One of the questions in the contest is which team will have the longest touchdown and how many yards will it be? Oklahoma or Baylor, there are chances to win all season long. Both these offenses are expo explosive, so you never know. And, and both have had chances early, and they've missed big plays down the field. First down at the 35 for the Bears. And they'll hand it off. Up the middle, Smith with all sorts of running room. Crosses the 45, a gain of 11. This is what you need from this style of offense. Is you, you need flow from the defense. And then what happens is that Abram Smith presses that front side, and then he can cut back. That's the prototypical zone run play. Get the defense moving, get one of them down, and then a space arises, and you can take advantage. First down at the 46. Bohannon, he'll pitch it out. Ebner trying to get to the edge and will not. Great pursuit. Asamoa. Once again, we've been mentioning his name since the very beginning. And remember, he's having to make up for the fact that his linebacker mate, Deshaun White, is not playing today. You've seen a little bit of Danny Stutzman in the game, number 28. Stutzman is a freshman that they are very high on. He had an injured elbow earlier in the year. They said he would have played through it because he's a tough guy, but that's why he's got that brace on his left elbow. Those two linebackers are playing well. Second and nine at the 47. Far side, they pitch it. Smith and Smith will gain two yards. Asamoah awesome again. Nice job by Pat Fields as well, number 10 coming up. And this is where the pass rush has to show up for OU. Now, their sack numbers have gone down over the last few games, and they've got to start getting more pressure on the quarterback. Now, Jalen Redmond's back in, but Isaiah Thomas is a guy that they need to get loose. He's got five and a half sacks on the year, number 95. You've got to get him in the backfield. Third and seven at the 48. And they'll run it with Smith. Smith, first down and more, sticks his foot in the ground. And he'll go down at the 35, a 17-yard run. Looks like they caught Oklahoma off balance. The Sooners were ready for a passing attempt. Well, they got everybody up near the line of scrimmage. And when you got those linebackers walked up right into the face of the offensive line, there's no levels of defense. So one seam, you create one gap in the defense, and you've got a big play because of that. So you take away the levels as a defense because you think you can get pressure on a third down, but they get burned by the run play. Eight carries, 46 yards for Smith already. And they'll feed him again. The crash forward. Gets to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. Stutzman with the stop on defense, no gain. And this is what I'm talking about, Gus. See, now you have levels of defense. So the linebackers are back, and now they have a free flow over to where the run play is. The linemen can't get to them. But when they walk up and they're at the line of scrimmage in the face of the offensive line, you remove those levels, and that's when big plays generally happen in the run game. Second and 10 at the 35. Bohannon, sideline, caught, nicely done. Estrada turns it up, flag on the play. Should be enough for a first down and another flag thrown late. 
17 yard gain if it stands. I think they got a little face mask there from Key Lawrence, number 12. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 12. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. So when he first arrives at Estrada, Estrada, there's the face mask, pulls it, and as Turner Yell finishes him off, the flags came out. And now Baylor has got to convert on this series. We've seen them now in good field position most of this game offensively. They had one series go all the way inside the five-yard line. They don't have points to show for it. They've got to capitalize here on a first and goal. At the nine-yard line, Ebner in the backfield. Estrada in motion. And here's Ebner. Reverses, looking for a block. Ebner gets a block. Ebner at the five. I thought Drew Estrada did a great job of not causing a penalty marker to be thrown. You're exactly right. He had Delarian Turner yell lined up, and as Ebner cut back all the way across the field, Gus, I saw exactly what you saw. I thought, that looks like it's going to be a block in the back, and then he just kind of stopped, and he presented more of, like, the basketball screen. It's just kind of getting his way, maybe a little hip check. And that's what allowed Ebner to gain a few positive yards for Dave Aranda. He'll gain three. Second down goal at the six. Smith. Oh, he's caught in the backfield and we dropped for a loss. Nick Benito. Benito made a great inside move. Here's Benito on the edge, and watch as he's just going to get inside of the tackle. He's going to set him on the outside and then just go right inside, and there he is in the backfield for a tackle for loss. Excellent play by one of the best outside linebackers in America. So a loss of two, third down and goal at the eight. What do you want to run down here quickly, partner? Well, I think that they've got to do something in the pass game, and right now singled up, Tyquan Thornton. He's the guy I would try to target. Third and goal at the eight. Bohanna looking, he's got him! Touchdown, Tyquan Thornton! That's my quarterback that called that play, by the way. Joel Klatt. Well, when you can't run it, and they haven't been able to run it down here in the low red zone, meaning inside the 10-yard line, what do you have to do? You've got to find a matchup on the outside. Their matchup is going to their 6-3 wide receiver. Bohannon knows it. He's going to throw a fade. And Key Lawrence, number 12, was way out of position, way too far inside, and the fade was easily completed for a touchdown. Isaiah Hankins comes in to attempt the extra point. And it's good. Ten plays covering 75 yards. The Bears eat up 536. Bohannon finds his main man, Tyquan Thornton, and it's seven up. Baylor, OU. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by Cadillac. We welcome you back. Waco 7-7 scoreline. Rob Stone with you coming up on the State Farm Halftime. We'll check in on number six, Michigan, as they try to keep their playoff hopes afloat. They're struggling with Penn State. And then number two, Alabama, a 51-point favorite over New Mexico State. That's the largest spread in FBS this year. I'm sure Joel has a thought on that in a moment. And we're going to check in with the Badgers. Wisconsin, guys, part of that four-way tie atop the Big Ten West. How much, how much time you got, Rob? I got all day for you, baby, all day for you. <laughs> yeah, Joel, why is Alabama playing New Mexico State this because, late in November? Because the SEC schedules for championships. That's their MO, and they, they're able to do that because there's no consistency across the country in how conferences schedule. So they only play eight conference games, and wisely they put one of those conference games really early in the season in September, and it frees up a date late for a non-conference game. And just like Oklahoma played Western Carolina, Alabama schedules New Mexico State, but the difference is they play them in November and not September. Let's check in with Jenny. Well, Gus, you mentioned Baylor receiver Tyquan Thornton was from Miami over 1,300 miles from home. He said this week sometimes he gets in fights with his teammates about who produces better football players, Texas or Florida. Now, Coach Aranda said Ty has always been blessed. He has the athleticism. It really is his practice habits. And he and Gary Bohannon have a special connection. They were roommates when they came in in 2018. That connection, no doubt, paying off today. All right, thank you very much, Oklahoma. Here's the pitch back to Williams. Trickery and Williams does it to the sideline incomplete. 
Michael Woods the target. Baylor was not fooled on the play. Al Walcott in coverage. Nice job by Walcott gets in there. Breaks it up and the safeties also stayed home. They didn't allow that flea flicker to catch them off guard and they were there as Mims was running through the middle of the field. Second and 10 of the 25. 437 to play in the first half. Brooks gets outside. Kennedy Brooks and he's swept down by Al Walcott again. Hustle up to the line of scrimmage, try to get a look at this defense here on another third down. Third and seven. Williams. Williams looking. Five Mississippi, six Mississippi. Over the middle and incomplete. Wow, Marvin Mims has dropped it. But there is a flag. Prior to the pass, holding defense number 37. 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. Boy, he had all day, and you're wondering where did he want to go with the ball? He was trying to get it to Hazelwood, who was one on one with Mark Milton. Not really a hold, maybe more of a trip there, as there was all sorts of contact. That's why the flag came out on Mark Milton, number 37, and it gives OU a first down. From the 38. Here's Williams in trouble. Williams, and he'll go down. Gabe Hall jumps on his back. Great pressure. Ika also in there, and that's a loss of six. Watch Matt Jones come around from linebacker. He's the first pressure on that right side of the offense. He's why Williams steps up, and then you get the pressure from inside. Gabe Hall jumps on his back. And that defensive line finally starting to get a little pressure there after the, what was it, eight Mississippi on the last play? Did we get to eight? <laughs> yeah, we dang near did. Second down and 16 at the 32. Williams running it, trying to find a hole, and he does. Cuts it back, still moving. And a first down for Oklahoma. Caleb Williams on second and 16 gets 18. Tejada stops him. That's why he's the quarterback at o Oklahoma, right there. That, I mean, that you can't coach that. That's that's all skill. It's it's a want to. It's a desire. He wanted to go right initially. That's where the play is set up. It wasn't afforded him. He goes left, stiff arm, stays in bounds, and moves the chance. Looks like he may be shaken up. He'll throw it. Sits. Fires underneath, caught. It's Hall and Jeremiah Hall gains 18. He's he's looking at his right hand right now. He's flexing it. He was trying to stiff arm here late, and as he goes down to the ground, oh, it gets stepped on. There you see, that's Devin Neal. No, it was 22. JT Woods, and this is him after the last pass, trying to shake it off after the completion. First down and 10 at the 31. Kennedy Brooks, stop and start, cuts it inside, powers forward, look at it. Great leg drive for Kennedy Brooks. Terrell Bernard with the tackle. Eight yard gain. I just, I love watching Kennedy Brooks run. He, like I said, it's the patience, but then He's also got a sense of urgency to his patience because at any moment when it's open or when the hole pops open, he's ready to cut up field and run hard. He's elusive. He's got great vision. He can catch it out of the backfield, really an all-around back. Eight carries, 31 yards in the first half. Second and two at the 23. Brooks again follows his blockers, but will go nowhere. Bain of stuffing. The hole, Terrell Bernard with a tackle. No way you can seven, seven hour score. Back after this. Put the lights on.
Don't forget, coming up at halftime, Rob Stone, Brady Quinn, Reggie Bush, Matty Fresh, and Big Game Bob are standing by with the State Farm halftime show. Such a big third down because OU, with only a minute 24 left here in the second quarter, they also are kicking off to start that second half, right? So Baylor's trying to retain some time. If they can get off the field here, they would have a chance to get a score and then get the ball to start the second half. OU has converted its last two third downs after starting 0 for 3. Third down and two at the 23. Williams pulls it out, dumps it, incomplete. Great pressure by the Bears. Drake Stoops was the target. And Oklahoma will attempt a field goal. And you just wonder if Caleb Williams is feeling the effect of getting his hand stepped on here. He's trying to get the ball to Stoops, does not have his momentum with him, so he's throwing a, a bit of a fadeaway as Stoops is also running away from him, and it was short. Gabe Burkich missed the 51-yarder. This one from 40 yards away. reliable kickers in the nation has missed two in the first half and the score remains 7-7 seven, seven. both of them he's missed to the right pushed it this one sails wide and now Baylor's got a great chance here offensively they've been able to move the ball in this first half 151 total yards Lincoln Riley knows that that was a an opportunity missed, and now Baylor again getting the ball to start the second half. This is a great chance to try to get some points and create some momentum for that first half or that first series of the second half. So a first down and 10 for the Bears. 116 remaining. Baylor with one timeout left. And Ebner goes nowhere. I'll tell you what, I like the way this Oklahoma defense is playing in this first half. And we've been covering o Oklahoma for many, many years. And the defense has always been their Achilles heel. They felt like they would play, if not their best day on defense, close to it. There's Alex Grinch, the defensive coordinator, just because of their health. Because they're getting so many guys back. Woody Washington back and available. Delarian Turner Yell, DJ Graham, Jalen Redman, all these guys now back and starting to get healthy. And you're starting to see the dividends of that. Very fast physical defensive front seven so far. Second down and 14. And it's Smith. Smith still on the move. They pick up a first down. Flag on the play. Illegal shift. Offense number zero and number nine. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. And that's Thornton. They do a lot of movement before the snap for their offensive coordinator. But if you're Baylor, Joel, Oklahoma comes into this game as the fifth scoring offense in the country, averaging 43 points per game. You have to give a lot of credit to the defensive coordinator, Ron Roberts, and his game plan coming into this game against one of the most innovative minds in Lincoln Riley and his OU offense. Yeah, both defenses have played really well so far here in this first half, and both offenses have missed opportunities. Both teams with missed field goals, missed chances down the field. And we're going to be tied up at seven here at the break. Don't forget, after the break, join Rob Stone and the boys with the State Farm Halftime Show right here from McLean Stadium. Seven up, our halftime score here in Waco. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by AT&T Business. Welcome back to Waco, Texas. We've got a cook and brewing. 7-7, OU ranked eighth. Baylor ranked 13th as we head to the second half. Welcome back, everybody. Gus Johnson along with my partner, Joel Clad, And 
partner, I feel that in the first half we saw great defense yeah. and some missed opportunity. Yeah, both I mean both sides, both both defenses played well, both offenses missed opportunities, but it was it was really Oklahoma's ability to capitalize on their interception, their turnover on defense. Let's take a look at the second half connection brought to you by AT&T Business, keeping your business connected with AT&T 5G. Here's that interception I was talking about. There's Brian Asamoah, he eyes up the crossing route. Bohannon never sees him, and he throws the ball into coverage. Delarian Turner Yell is able to get the pick, and that's what led Oklahoma then down the field. Here's Caleb Williams on a little quarterback run. Great block from Kennedy Brooks. Williams is able to get into the end zone easily, but Baylor had an answer, and they were able to get back down the field. And this is what I'd like to see more of in the second half. Iquan Thornton, I think he's a mismatch for Baylor on the outside, Gus. If they can target him more in this second half with Gary Bohannon, I think they've got something brewing. Two missed field goals and an interception for OU. Fair fourth down inside the five. Missed field goal and a pick for the Baylor Bears. And the question is, how is Caleb Williams' hand? Yeah, that, that was interesting. That last series for them offensively. And you know what? I always experienced, Gus, and I'm sure you did when you played any sport, really, and everybody out there that played. When, when an injury or something happens right away, it's kind of like the shock of like, oh, man, that hurt. And then it gets worse and worse and worse as it, it, time goes on. It gets stiff, and you're trying to keep working it out, working out. So that will be a storyline here in this second half. How Caleb Williams is doing with that throwing hand that got stepped on on one of the runs of the last series. If you're the Baylor Bears, you feel good heading sure. into this second half with this game level at seven. Once again, a reminder of what happened to Caleb Williams. Look at that right hand, his throwing hand stepped on inadvertently. Oh, man. He was certainly shaking it after. They were checking it on the sideline. Have to see how effective he is throwing the ball here in the second half. Burkage will send it away. Baylor to receive it to start the second half. And a flag. This ball kicked out of bounds. So Baylor will get good field position as Burkage is. Kick off out of bounds. Kicking team. Ball in place at the 35 yard line. First down. Burkage has had a rough start. Two missed field goals, and now he kicks it out of bounds. Let's go downstairs to Jenny Taff. Well, Gus, you guys pointed out all eyes on Caleb Williams and that throwing hand. How is he responding? I did learn that he was doing some exercises in the locker room, just trying to keep that hand fresh and comfortable. He was uncomfortable. I asked Lincoln Riley about it. He said, I have no concern. He is too tough to let that get in his way. Coach Aranda said, I like where we're at at half. We cannot let the emotion take too much out of this game. We need to keep winning those third downs. And on first down, Bohannon with the run now. Bohannon still on the move. Bohannon with a seam and he'll get out of bounds inside Oklahoma territory. 29-yard run for Gary Bohannon. Oklahoma's defense did a pretty good job against the run in the first half and they were very aggressive to the play side to the running back side and there that's a terrific misdirection using the quarterback run and the fast flow of the defense against themselves. Bohannon three carries 50 yards that could be an X factor in this game first and 10 at the 37 play fake Bohannon short roll drops it off. And Ben Sims is tight end with the catch. Delarian Turner yell with the tackle. Sims four catches, 53 yards against TCU last week. Both of those first two plays of this series, they're designed to slow down the backside of the defense. Again, Oklahoma very fast and aggressive on defense. Those linebackers, Osamoa, he was really good in the first half. So what they do is they use the run game to then attack the backside of that defense and try to slow them down to present some gaps moving forward. Second and seven at the 34. Smith. Abram Smith stopped by a global. Flag late. There was some jawing going on. It looked like Perrion Winfrey was right in front of the official, and he was jawing with some guys over there when the flag came out. 
after the play was over. Unsportsmanlike conduct, taunting, defense number eight, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Perion Winfrey is a senior. Well, now Baylor's got to take advantage. The last time they got down here, they were able to take advantage, and they did so with Tyquan Thornton on the outside. And if they'll go back to him, he's matched up with Key Lawrence, number 12. First and 10 at the Oklahoma 19 for the Baylor Bears. Bohannon drops it off. And incomplete. Smith, the intended receiver, looked like Gary Bohannon rushed that. Yeah, he did because he, he had Smith. And Smith maybe wouldn't have gotten a huge gain because Osamoa was there in coverage coming up to make the tackle. But that still could have been a positive gain, three, four, maybe even five yards with Smith getting ahead of steam. And now they'll be what I would call Gus behind the chain, second and long. From the 19. Smith trying to get downhill and will not. That front seven doing a terrific job. Aguebu again leading the charge for OU. Now Alex Grinch has got to know that they're going to try to attack on the outside. The speed's coming back on the field. The wide receivers. Alex Grinch likes to play man coverage with his defense, but I don't know if they've got somebody that they will feel great in coverage against Tyquan Thornton. He's going to be at the top of your screen. Remember on the last third down, that's where they went. Third and 11 from the 21. Empty backfield for Gary Bohannon. Remember, he's got 50 yards rushing so far. Bohannon looking over the middle, caught, but not enough for first down. And that's Ebner. Let's see if Baylor elects to go for it or if they'll go for the points. I think they need to capitalize with points. Remember, he already went for it on fourth down on their first series inside the five didn't get points out of that positive possession and Dave Aranda will pick the field goal here I think that's the correct call Isaiah Hankins missed a 51 yarder this one from 32 yards away and it's perfect 11.49 to go, third quarter. Baylor takes a 10-7 lead over OU. Back to Waco, Texas in a moment. Big News Saturday is sponsored by T-Mobile, America's largest, fastest, and most reliable 5G network. And don't forget, you can find all of Joel's Breaking the Huddle content including his weekly top 10 rankings at FoxSports.com, the Fox Sports app, and CFB on Fox social platforms. You know what I want for that show? What? I want to get the footage of a young Gus Johnson getting his first break in Waco, Texas, at the local affiliate here. Can we get that? You know, that's on tape. Somewhere, right? Oh, my gosh. Yes, it is a bit of a homecoming for you today. That's right. You got your, first, your first big break was a job right here in Waco, Texas. KXXV TV Channel 25. Nicest people in the world. All right, coming up next on Fox, Maryland takes on the seventh-ranked Michigan State Spartans. The action kicks off next on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Michigan State losing at Purdue last week. Purdue's got Ohio State this week in Columbus. What do you think about that game? Well, What's Purdue all about? I mean, all they, they beat be Iowa. Yeah, they, and they just take down monsters, right? That's all That's all they do. Here's uh, Michigan State 8-1, dropped four spots in those rankings. Behind Michigan, who they beat nine days ago. Thanks for that committee. I did see that game with my own eyes. Gus, you and I were there. I'm not crazy. We saw Michigan State beat Michigan, right? Right. I'm just checking because those 13 people in a room in Dallas told me that didn't happen. Wow. And here's Williams dropping it off to Austin Stogner. Stogner tackled at the 32, maybe the 33-yard line. You know, the wide receivers have not been really involved in this game for OU. Williams has only completed two passes to his wide receivers. Everything else has been to his H-backs, his tight ends, the swing to Eric Gray out of the backfield on that third down on the scoring possession. 
First down and 10 at the 35. Brooks sliding through the hole. And Devin Neal with the tackle. It's a nine-yard game. I love his vision. Watch his vision again. He's going to go over to the right, and then he finds the hole and goes back over to his left side. Terrific, terrific vision. Explodes up the field. Man, love watching this guy run the ball. Second and one at the 44. Looks like a busted play here. Williams in trouble, and he'll just throw it up and picked off. Al Walcott. It looked like Caleb Williams wanted to throw it out of bounds. But he didn't. He didn't have a running back in the backfield. He, he goes for a play fake. There was nobody there. And then, yes, it looks like he was trying to throw it out of bounds, but I don't think he could just absolutely launch that out of bounds because he was still in the pocket, if I'm not mistaken, which means he was trying to throw it in the vicinity of a wide receiver. And right there, it's the interception, and Williams makes another massive mistake. He threw the ball late, early in the game, over the middle of the field. That one was picked off, and here Walcott, the beneficiary of a huge mistake from the young quarterback. And now Baylor back in business. Good field posi position again after their second takeaway. Second interception thrown by Caleb Williams, the freshman. Ron Roberts' defense is really confusing the young sir right now. And here's Bohannon on the move. Bohannon to the 40. Gary Bohannon picks up 23. He's got 73 yards rushing. They told us he was going to have to be a factor with his legs, and he certainly has been so far. Bohannon is using that fast flow of the Oklahoma defense against them. Faking one direction, he reads that in. He's got blockers out in front and another big game. He came into this game with 176 yards rushing on the season. And here's the reverse. Bohannon gets it back. Bohan and slipping and sliding, and they'll lose five, maybe six yards. Boy, if he would have just kept the reverse, R.J. Sneed, it would have been wide open. There was nobody over there on the reverse, but they tried to flip it back to Bohannon and go down the field, and OU did a great job defending this. Watch here. Watch the left side. Here's Ebner, he gives it to Sneed right here. He's got, he's got the edge on this side. He can take off and run. He didn't, he flips it back. And because of that, they lose yardage. They lost five, second and 15. Bohannon lobs it. Caught and incomplete. That one knocked out of his hands at the last moment. Taekwon Thornton. But D.J. Graham was there to break it up. Oh, man, if he throws this ball with some more velocity on a line, that's going to get to him before D.J. Graham can recover. Here's Thornton who gets down, and then the ball just gets knocked out of his hands by Graham. What a great defensive play. Bohannon's got to change the trajectory. That's not a lofted pass. As soon as he's got that win, he's got to drive the ball outside to get it to his wide receiver quicker. And you know D.J. Graham can make some plays. We saw it in the Nebraska game. Third and 15 at the 43. And here's a little short pass to Ebner. Ebner with a first down. And more down the sideline. Out of bounds at the 15. Justin Ebner with a burst. That's a gain of 23. First, Ebner is going to come up as if he's going to block. And then he drops out of this. And again, misdirection, a screen pass right in the middle of the field. Now Ebner gets out to the right, and he's gone. Good speed from Ebner, fifth-year senior from Henderson High School right here in Texas. He's a terrific return man getting loose on the outside. First and ten at the Oklahoma 20. Baylor up by three. Got a delay here. Delay a game. Offense. Offense. Five yard penalty. First down. I'm always amazed at how that happens when the clock is right in front of the quarterback if he <laughs> looks up. There's a lot of information those guys are thinking. <laughs>
<laughs> My bad. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. I'm going to try to back him up. I mean, I, listen, I agree. That's You've got to, as, as a quarterback, that's part of your job. But in this day and age when you can call timeouts from the sideline, I'm always like, hey, coach, you're over there, you know, with the water. How about you help me out? First and 15, Smith. And he'll get to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. You know, it's this philosophy, though, and you got to credit Jeff Grimes because he's stuck with the run game. It's been s somewhat successful. They were able to get loose on a few runs, but Jeff Grimes comes over from BYU. He was a BYU offensive coordinator a year ago. Did a great job there. Was a Broyles finalist. Is one of the top assistant coaches in the country. He comes here, totally transforms this offense and their identity, more so their identity than anything else. They are a run-first, run-heavy offense. A lot of physicality, and then now that's being used for some of the misdirection here. Second down and 15. Bohannon steps up. Drops it off. Sneed. And Sneed, Oklahoma says he lost the football, and they have it. Another turnover. Oklahoma has recovered a fumble. Gus Osamol is the one coming flying in from the inside. He's the one that makes contact with Snead. Watch him coming in from your right side. Bam! And he clubs that ball. The just question is, is, is it coming loose? And it certainly was before he was down. How about that? OU's defense holds again. Big Dude Saturday is sponsored by Honda. Tomorrow on Fox, Zeke and the Cowboys take on Matt Ryan and the Falcons, and the Vikings take on Justin Herbert and the Chargers. Check local listings for the game in your area only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Lots of points being left on the board in this game are from both teams. Burkitt has missed a couple of field goals. Baylor's missed a field goal. Baylor's now failed on fourth down inside the five there. Sneed was inside the 20-yard line when he fumbles. There's Caleb Williams today. OU has run 15 plays in Baylor territory for seven points. Baylor has run 31 plays in OU territory for 10. First and 10 from the 16. And it's Kennedy Brooks who get to the 20. Gain of four. Lincoln Riley, if, he, if he's looking at trying to calm his quarterback down, Williams has not played great today. He had a couple of nice runs, and he's missed on a couple of deep chances. But I, I think if he wants to throw the ball, he's got to get him some easier completions. Baylor player down. Rick Flair. Everybody used to say he was saying, you got to beat the man to be the man. Diamonds are forever, and so is Ric Flair. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> he was great. That's so good. Second and six of the 20. But well, we got the six-time Big 12 champ right here, so I guess if you're Baylor, you got to beat the man to be the man. You, you know what? In Very good. Game right here. <laughs> yeah. In order to be the man, you got to beat the man. What's going on here? We don't know right now. Dave Miranda is talking to the officials. Cole Maxwell was the injured Baylor player. He walked off on his own. A lot of rumors floating around about Dave Aranda. One big one, the University of Southern California, and they're opening. Second and six at the 20. Williams. Fire sideline incomplete. You know, we've seen from Oklahoma, it's like they're either running the ball or trying to take big shots down the field. Just get the sense that you got to try to find some of the easier completions. Get Williams outside of the pocket where he has a run pass option. Get him some of those easier completions, and that could settle him down. Rushing yards have gone the way of Baylor. Oklahoma only thrown it for 75 yards so far. And again, a Dave Aranda team is just absolutely hemming Lincoln Riley's offense in. We've seen it for two straight years, and they're doing it again today. Third and six at the 20. Williams guns it. Incomplete, but a flag. Mario Williams was the intended receiver.
prior to the pass, holding on an eligible receiver. Defense number 11. 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. That's Lorendo Johnson, the redshirt freshman from Earl, Arkansas. He was trying to defend Austin Stogner. Here's the play on the other side as Williams trying to get some space and just can't. Mark Milton can play so tight because he's got safety help over the top. Here's the hold on the other side of the field against Stogner, number 18, as Johnson grabbed the hold early. So first down at the 30-yard line for Oklahoma. Caleb Williams. Sideline, Michael Woods with the reception. And he'll pick up nine. I'll tell you what, though, Joel, this Oklahoma offensive line in terms of pass protection, they have been excellent. Yeah, they absolutely have. This is this is a very good offensive line. They've been able to hold up here in protection. And this Baylor team, they have struggled getting to the quarterback so far this year. They're 63rd in the country in sacking the quarterback. It's just not been a strength of those. Second and one at the 39. Brooks, first down. You just wonder what would happen if Lincoln Riley made the decision to allow his offensive line to run block if he just really committed to it and let Kennedy Brooks get loose. You know, it, it's sometimes you've got to build towards the shot down the field. You can do that by getting two, three, maybe even four really quality run snaps under your belt, Gus, and then the big play action fake to Kennedy Brooks, and you get the safety with just a moment of hesitation. But they've been trying to take those shots early in the series or even on first down, and the safeties aren't biting. First down and 10 at the 48. Here's Williams dropping back the pass. He's got a man wide open and complete. Just couldn't put it on him. Austin Stogner was wide open. Williams has just not been in rhythm today. Because Stogner, this is a bread and butter play for them when they try to take a shot. They're trying to flood an area of the field. You see as you're taking off with Trevon West and then Stogner drops out on the outside where they just cleared out the defense and Williams just throws it over his head. Remember, Williams got his hand stepped on in the first half. We know how we don't know how much that's affecting his throwing right now. Second and ten at the 48. Caleb Williams sprinting out, steps up in trouble and goes down for a sack. And that looked like another busted play. Oklahoma. They've been a little shaky in certain areas of the offense today in terms of execution. They were trying to get Eric Gray out on a screen on the outside. Watch, he just gets knocked down right there. They were setting up blocking out in front. Third down and 14. Can Baylor get off the field? Caleb Williams flushed out. Flag on the play. Caleb Williams takes a spin and goes down short of the first down. But there is a flag. Look to be holding in the backfield on OU. Holding. Offense number 56. 10 yard penalty. Repeat third down. Gabe Hall, number 95, is going to be coming around the edge. And then he starts working on Anton Harrison. There's a little bit of a grab and a shove. I'm not sure. I've seen more egregious holding today than that one. But the flag comes out there, and I'm sure Baylor has been begging for that holding call all day long. So that'll make it third down and 24 at the 34. Eric Gray, who's good receiving out of the backfield. Caleb Williams now looks. And knocked out of his hands. He picks it up in trouble. Williams sacked at the 19. Whoa, what pressure. Bryson Jackson finally cleaned him up. He's got all day to throw initially, and then finally you get some pressure from Matt Jones, number 52, right here in the face of Williams. Ball comes out, bounces back to him. Unbelievable break for OU that they don't turn it over right there, and then ultimately they get Williams to the ground.
Well, you've got to credit the coverage down the field all day long. How many times have we sat in there and just been. The previous play is under further review. Williams had all day to throw and nowhere to go with the football. This secondary, a veteran group led by one of the better players in this conference and even country and Jalen Petrie has done a heck of a job and they've got some guys banged up. We're going to see if that was actually incomplete, but it was correctly ruled on the field. I feel like a fumble. That ball was knocked out before the hand was coming forward. Good hustle from Matt Jones, the sophomore from Odessa, Texas, played at Permian. Everybody knows Odessa Permian. Right. And that ball, yeah, that was not coming forward. So I think it was correctly on the field, ruled a fumble. Williams continues and ends up losing a few yards, and there's the conversation with his head coach. And again, Williams has just not looked the same. And you've got to credit this defense. Ron Roberts, the coordinator, who was the first hire for Dave Aranda when he got the job here at Baylor, a guy that mentored Dave Aranda all the way back in one of Dave's first jobs. He hires Ron After Roberts. the review, it was ruled that it was a fumble and not a forward pass. It's still fourth down. And Gus, Ron has done such a good job mixing the looks, and you can tell Williams is confused. They haven't gotten the ball down the field. They've gotten some pressure at times, not a lot. And that's what Ron told us in our meeting with him yesterday. I have to disguise everything for Lincoln Riley because I know this is a chess match. And he's played that chess match beautifully, absolutely beautifully. Remember, last year, Baylor held OU to their lowest total yards of the season, lowest rush yards of the season. That's happening again here in Waco today. 39 plays for OU, only 157 yards. Baylor with a chance to get good field position. Michael Turk punts inside his own 10. Ebner is the deep man. And he's signaling for the fair catch. Let's it take a bounce. And we roll down inside the 25 to the 20, but there is a flag. And to Rattler warming up on the illegal Oklahoma. formation kicking team. It's a five yard penalty they added to the end of the kick. First down, timeout. Lincoln Riley, will he go to his bullpen? That's the question because Coach Aranda and the Bears have their number so far. In 2011, when Oklahoma traveled to Waco, they were talking about the possibility of a college football championship with Robert Griffin III. But an end to all of that, he had 515 yards of total offense and four touchdowns, upsetting the number five Sooners, 45-38. Griffin went on to win the Heisman. First and 10 for 21. Here's Bohannon. And Bohannon. Slicing and dicing like a Ginsu knife. 18 yard game. But it's this flow. Watch the backside of the defense for Oklahoma. Nobody with contain. Bohannon is able to just run out there, and they've got blockers to spare, and he does a great job running. This has been a really good game plan in the second half using the quarterback Bohannon in the run game. Six carries, 85 yards, first down, and they'll pitch it. Ebner. Flag throw. He's knocked out of bounds by Justin Broyles. Holding. Offense number 64. Ten-yard penalty. First down. That's Khalil Keith. The start at right tackle. Today's been right rotating a bit with Gavin Byers, and there Keith gets the holding. And you see, Gus, you see, like, when, when Baylor just goes one direction, right, when they just take the, the back and go the same direction, watch the flow of the defense. See how fast? They're running towards the ball. Yeah. Everything that Baylor is doing successfully in this half is using that against OU. The screens, the boot game, getting the quarterback outside the pocket, or even the quarterback run. They've got to stick with that. Stick in the misdirection game using the tailbacks like Smith, Abram Smith, or Ebner as a disguise. Second down and 14. Penalty declined, and it's Ebner. Forward lead. And that's a 
10 yard gain. I would go right back to the quarterback read run game. Bohannon has not been sharp throwing the football today. He's only 9 of 18. Does have the touchdown. But we've seen him throw some inaccurate passes. If they can get back to that quarterback read game with Ebner, I, I think that that's their best option here, even on a third down. Third down and four at the 45. Bohannon option. And nothing. Great job by this Oklahoma defense. Pat Fields comes up and drops it. A loss of three. Fields does a great job, and this is exactly what Oklahoma was thinking. Watch the safety, Pat Fields. He's just going to creep down, and he never goes with that opposite side flow, and he's right there to get Ebner in the backfield for a nice third down stop. So Isaac Power comes in to punt. Isaac Power in punt from the 27. Marvin Mims is the deep man. He's at his own 15. Mims from the 24, and he'll go down at the 25. Great special teams coverage by the Baylor Bears. They were really into it. A.J. McCarty with the tackle. So now look at this. Here we go. Spencer Rattler will get his opportunity. Jenny, he's been ready for this and preparing himself to go back in, hasn't he? He has been dialed in, of course, warming up on the field. He did share a moment with Caleb right now. Took a knee, said a prayer. Jaden Hasselwood said, are you ready? He said, I got this. Let's get out there and do something about it. Rattler went from Heisman favorite and first team preseason All-American to backup quarterback. He'll throw it on first down, winds up, lets it rip. And caught! No, they say incompletion. Trying to hit the transfer, Michael Woods, down the field, and he's getting interfered with, and there was no flag. Poor call by the officials there. There's the ball hitting the ground. Tejada was all over him. Raleigh Tejada, number three, pulls his arm down, prevents him from going up to get the ball, and now it's going to be second down for OU, but again, a deep shot on first down. Spencer Rattler, 11 touchdown passes on the season. Five interceptions. He's been sacked 11 times. Second down and 10 at the 25. Rattler sprints out. Dumps it off. Ball caught by Hazelwood. Will lower his shoulder and get out of bounds. JT Woods defensively for Baylor. In a three-game stretch encompassing West Virginia, Kansas State, and Texas, he was sacked nine times. Threw just three touchdown passes. Picked off three times. Fumbled three times. And that opened the door for Caleb Williams. But at, at its core, there's more of the passing game available now for Rattler because he's more experienced. I know Williams has gotten some time, but it was a little bit of a vanilla passing game, and now you're going to see this passing game open up a little bit with Rattler at quarterback. Third and nine of the 26. Here's Rattler. Dancing. Rattler breaks contain. Oh, and he is tracked down from behind. T.J. Franklin. The junior from Temple, Texas. And OU will put it away. And Rattler has room to run here. What a great effort from T.J. Franklin. Watch as Franklin is being blocked. Now he pulls out, and he's able to get Rattler to the ground, swiping at that right, right leg, and OU will have to punt. And that takes us to the end of the third quarter. Who would have thought that at the end of three, the score would be 10-7? to seven. Defense. Brilliant today for both teams. Back for the fourth after this. Big News Saturday is sponsored by AT&T Business. Start of the fourth quarter. 10-7 our score. Baylor leading Oklahoma. Thus, Joel, Jenny, and Mikey Rulebooks. Sooners will have to punt it away. Michael Turk from his own 10. Ebner, the deep man, at the 26. Turk. Ebner from the 20 makes a first man miss. And he'll get out of bounds at the 30. But there is a flag. 
55 yard punt and the 10 yard return. Boy, Turk has been great, and this is a guy that he should be fresh. He's punted like the fewest times of anybody in the country. But he's he's been pretty good today for OU and in particular against a really good return man, Tristan Ebner, one of the better. During the, the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team number 13. 10 yard penalty, first down. Our Pacific Life game summary sponsored by Pacific Life. More than 150 years strong. Protect what matters most. Here was the first scoring play of the game. Williams in two yard TD. Great block by Kennedy Brooks. Then it was Gary Bohannon that got into it. Beautiful pass to Tyquan Thornton in the corner. And Baylor would tack on a field goal. But Gus, we could have just sat there and just showed you 10 minutes of defensive highlights yes. <laughs> for the story of this game. Both defenses, but credit Baylor. Baylor's defense under Dave Aranda and Ron Roberts have held OU to 157 yards through three quarters. That's the lowest amount through three quarters since Riley came to Norman. Off well, first down, Smith with the running room. Abram Smith picking him up, puts him down. Abram Smith down inside the 10. 75 yards. Gavin Yates 43 with an unbelievable block. Abram Smith is a bit hobbled after the play. What an incredible run down the field. And he got tracked down by Witter 13. And it looks like Shane Witter landed on his legs when he goes down the right leg that's exactly what happened first down and goal of the eighth for Baylor Ebner trying to get around the corner breaks a tackle they string it out nicely and they'll lose yardage on the play two yards and a but a flag that came in late I think this is going to be a horse caller Justin Broyles, it looks like, grabbed the back collar. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, defense number 25. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Here's Broyles as he's chasing Ebner down. There's the right hand absolutely on the collar. Correct call as Broyles was trying to drag him down out of bounds. So they'll spot the football at the five-yard line. First down and goal. They have not been good in the red zone. Baylor has got to capitalize here. They've got all the momentum. Their defense is playing unbelievable football. And now their offense has got to pay this off after the amazing run from Abram Smith to get him down inside the 10-yard line. Tyquan Thornton is your receiver at the bottom of your screen. He's their go-to man. First down and goal at the five. They'll hand it off. Ebner. And Ebner will lose yardage. It's been so tough for Baylor to run the ball inside the 10 yard line. That defensive line for Oklahoma has done a great job inside the 10. Arion Winfrey with the tackle. This is where they got to use the misdirection. It's either got to be quarterback run Gus in that little zone read game, or you've got to go and create the one on one on the outside with a Tyquan Thornton. Looks like Abram Smith may be ready to come back into the game. Second and goal at the five. Empty backfield for Bohannon. He'll throw it. Now steps up. Wants to run. Bohannon to the corner. Touchdown Bears. Feet don't fail me now. Gary Bohannon with his best rushing performance of the season. They're trying to run the same play that they ran on the fourth down in the first series of the game. Trying to get Thornton open on an outright, but Bohannon sees that it's wide open, and then he can win to the front pylon, and he does it. He's been terrific with his feet all day long, and there he's able to punch it in. Hank, it's in for the extra point, and it's good. Bohannon, seven carries, 90 yards. And now a touchdown. Baylor in business as we start the fourth as they lead Oklahoma. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by Pacific Life. More than 150 years strong. Protect what matters most.
Oh, you scored the first touchdown on the game to make it seven to nothing. But since then, 17 unanswered points by Baylor. 17 to seven, our score. 13 13 to go here in the fourth quarter. Marvin Mims is deep. Noah Rauschenberg will kick it away. And a touchback. And this Baylor defense has been superior today. They absolutely have. They've been confusing these quarterbacks and Lincoln Riley trying to take shots down the field that weren't there. Have a couple of takeaways and then they've gotten pressure when they've needed it. It hasn't been consistent but when they've needed a play that front has been able to get home. Ron Roberts has got to be absolutely ecstatic with the way his defense has played and his plan in the chess match has been brilliant from Ron Roberts. Held OU to 157 yards. That's incredible. First down and 10 of the 25. Rattler in for Caleb Williams. Throws. Nice throw. Good completion. Michael Woods with the catch. And I love what Coach Roberts said yesterday. He said, what I try to teach my guys to do is to play green, not yellow, and definitely not red. Meaning, I'm not going to play cautious. I'm going to play free. I'm going to play freewheeling and get out there and cut it loose. And that ball dropped incomplete. Kennedy Brooks, the intended receiver, makes it second down and 10. OU has just looked frazzled on offense yeah, out of sorts and a lot of it has been to be honest with you they've been they've kept trying to take shots down the field on first down so they've had too many second and tens and put put themselves in, in poor position there they just have a drop and now we're back in second and ten they won't commit to running the football here's Rattler to throw it again sideline nice throw great catch Michael Woods and Michael Woods goes down at the 47 mark Milton with the tackle, but I tell you, that ball is coming off Spritzer's hand pretty nice. Listen, I mean, the guy is still extremely talented, and this is the convenience, the luxury that Oklahoma has is that if needed, they can go to a guy that started the season as the Heisman front runner. First down at the 45, Rattler steps in the, in the pocket and runs it, and he goes down. Maybe a one yard gain. Ika, Terrell Bernard combining. Williams on the sideline. He got his hand stepped on the freshman in the first half, and it looks like it affected the way he played. And the fact that it, ju it just wasn't working. You know, the, whatever it was, the plan, the way he felt today, his rhythm, it just wasn't there. And now they're in a position that they've got to go with Rattler, and it's got to be more of a passing game with Rattler. Spencer Rattler with the chance to be the hero now. And they hand it off to Kennedy Brooks. And Brooks gets inside the 40. A flag on the play. Bernard again with the tackle. Brayden Willis, one of those H-backs, is going to get called here. Offense number nine. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat second down. He was the age back on that front side of the offensive play. You're going to see him here on the outside working against Randolph. He gets him right around and then just drags him down. Excellent call there, and that's what sprung Kennedy Brooks on the outside for positive yardage. J.K., what's the difference between an H back and a tight end? Well, not much. The H back typically moves more, so he's going to be off the line of scrimmage. A tight end is going to be a guy on the line going with the offensive strength call. So if you call right, he goes right. H back can go opposite. He can line up as a fullback. He's the motion guy a lot, so he's more of a variable in the offense than a true just straight tight end. Joe Gibbs made that position famous with the old Washington Redskins. Here's Rattler to the sideline. Mims with the catch, but he is tackled immediately. Great open field tackle by Jalen Petrie. Five yard game. This is a huge third down here. You got to think field goal range for them is about the 40 yard line. So they could get into field goal range without a first down. Generally they love crossing routes here. Riley loves to sneak guys across the field. It takes some time. But that's generally what they like to do. Third down at 13 at the 48. Do they bring pressure? No, they've had a lot of success. Well, yep, here it comes. And Rattler in trouble and sacked. Whoa, Terrell Bernard. 
Coach Roberts brought pressure again. And right now, Lincoln Riley's cap is spinning. Here's Bernard, and he's going to blitz from depth. So he's lined up at his linebacker position, and Kennedy Brooks is trying to come over and block him, and Brooks just is unable to protect the passer. Rattler has really no chance as he's trying to escape out to the right. We talked to Terrell Bernard yesterday. He's getting his master's degree in sports administration. What a wonderful young man. Michael Turk sends it away. Ebner lets it go over his head. Oh! And it goes into the end zone for a touchback. But how about this Baylor defense, folks? Ubiquitous, physical, disciplined, prepared. 17 to 7. Sick of Time permitting, don't forget to join Rob and the boys for College Football Extra presented by Crypto.com. I'll be able to break down, at least to this point, one of the great defensive performances that we've seen in a long time, Gus, from this Baylor defense today. And a terrific running performance from Gary Bohannon, the quarterback for Baylor. He hands it off to Smith. Get back in after that big 75-yard run. He went out for a couple of plays. The converted linebacker. He's a fighter. Well, talking to him was such a pleasure yesterday. Great perspective. It's just a warrior. Yeah, he absolutely is. You, you tried to buy a sweatshirt off of him. He said it's not for sale. The vintage sweatshirt. Oh, my gosh. He's a great sweatshirt, right? He's terrific. He says he has all sorts of vintage clothes. You know why he never wears them? Why? His teammates will always want to buy them off of him. That's right. <laughs> Second and seven from the 23. And offside the call. Bohannon takes a shot and just throws this one out of bounds. Nick Benito on that far side, the outside linebacker, just got a little bit. Offside. Offside. Defense number 11. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Oh, man, that's a, that's a huge penalty. You go from second and obvious, obvious passing down, to now you're in second and short where you can take a shot, you can get back to that run game. Uh, would, wouldn't be surprised if they get something in the misdirection game here or just go straight with the Smith run. Keep your eye on the clock. Under nine to play. Second and two of the 28. Abram Smith over 100 yards rushing once again. They'll give it to Smith. And Smith, look at the power. The force. Asamoah with the tackle, but it's a six-yard gain. First down, Baylor. And the clock keeps moving. The goal of that offensive line is to cover up color. And they've done a great job. Connor Galvin, Xavier Newman Johnson, Jacob Gall, a transfer from Buffalo, Grant Miller, a transfer from Vanderbilt, Khalil Keith, and Gavin Byers, who have rotated with right tackle. These guys have done an excellent job today and established that run game, that run identity that all the misdirection and quarterback run has come off of. Smith, 16 carries, 126 yards. And it's Smith again this time. He'll go nowhere. Jalen Redman with the tackle for the loss. It's a loss of four yards. What does cover up color mean? Did you say well, that? In, yeah, and so in, in the zone scheme, you hear me say, oh, it's zone running, zone running. That basically means you're not trying to fire off the ball and dominate in one specific area, like one gap where you're trying to aim the run play. You're trying to get in front of color and get them moving oh. so that then a gap or presents itself to the back anywhere. And that's why vision is so important to the back in the zone running scheme. Now he can pick the spot where he wants to go. Bohannon to throw it over the middle. Drops it off Ebner. And Ebner tackle quickly. The Denver Broncos under Mike Shanahan used to run that with right. Terrell Davis. Am I right? Absolutely. And, and even, you know, the Ravens with, uh, he went for over 2,000 yards and forgiven his forgetting his name right now but they, it was a similar style and it was get get the defense moving you get one guy cut on the backside or down and then a hole presents itself and you can either cut back or you can stay front side but Gus in zone it's not designed to go to a specific hole or gap in the offensive line third down and 12 with the 32 Bohannon hands it off and it's Smith. Smith spinning. He'll get 
Oh, look at that pile pushed forward. First down, Baylor. And there's a flag on the play. This is going to be an odd call right here, Gus. The flag came out because Grant Miller, the right guard, or excuse me, Jacob Gall, the center, he got his, his helmet came off, and he kept walking down the field. The rule is, is that if your helmet comes off, here's the helmet come off, should have been a hands to the face against Osimo, but the helmet there comes off. There is no foul on the play. I, I'm venturing a guess that what they said is that his hel helmet was basically ripped off. It didn't come off in the normal course. Because normally if your helmet comes off, you can't continue to participate in the play. It's a weird rule in college football. I think that's why the flag came out. But you see Asamoah, he's got his hands to his face. That hand, the, the, comes off because of Asamoah, and he continued on that same block. If he would have tried to get a different block, I think that probably would have been a flag again. It's, a, it's an obscure rule that's, that's somewhat odd, but that's what they were discussing. But how about the run, 15 yards? First down, Baylor. Smith. Now the Bears in no real hurry. As that clock continues to tick. Two possession game. The defense has played tremendous for Baylor. Alex Grinch is trying to dial something up for that defense of Oklahoma, knowing that at any moment, you know that that, that quarterback, Bohannon, could take off himself. He's been tremendous in the run game so far today with 90 yards on the ground. Second down and 12 at the 45. Here's Bohannon. Throws Bohannon back shoulder. He's got his man inside the 35. R.J. Sneed on second and 12. They pick up 21. Right now, Baylor manhandling the number eight team in the nation. There's Sneed on the corner out. Broyles cannot turn around. He doesn't identify the ball. And because it's underthrown, it's a benefit to Baylor. He comes back to get it, and they get a big completion down the field. First down at the Oklahoma 35. 5-16 to play. The Bears slowing things down now. Ebner breaks it back. Ebner. Looking to get outside and does as he crosses the 30. How about his speed, man? But that's that zone blocking you're talking about, right? Well, that, that is, and he can choose where he wants to go. He's trying to get to the backside. It looks like Oklahoma's got the angle, but he takes off. This is what makes him such a great return man. Remember, he was second team All-American last year as a return man. Here he's trying to go to the left side. See, they're covering up color. Now he's got to pick a gap. He wants to go backside, and now he's got to beat everybody in a foot race, race to the edge, and he's able to do it. Injured player on the field. Be back right after this. Baylor with 264 yards rushing today. The most rushing yards against Oklahoma since Army went for 339 in 2018. And Ebner picking his way forward. Asamoah brings him down, but he gains 10. Well, this is the game right now. Baylor doing a great job right there. Ebner finding a hole, getting upfield for a first down. A touchdown will basically come close to ending this. I'll make it a three possession game. We're inside of four minutes now and 30 seconds. First down at the Oklahoma 17. Smith. And Smith will get inside the 15. And Riley's going to have to start taking timeouts, and he will try to save some clock here in a two possession game. But Baylor thinking about that end zone, Gus. Touchdown here, 17 point game, uh, basically ended for the Bears.
You founded your kayak company because you love the ocean, not spreadsheets. How dominant has Baylor been today? They are closing in on running their 40th play in Oklahoma territory. Second down and seven at the 14. Gary Bohannon has been a great leader. He's taken what the defense has given him. Now he'll run it with a block. Splits. Bohannon! Touchdown, Baylor! You knew it was coming at some point because it's been so effective for Baylor. Gary Bohannon in that zone read game. All the defense is going to head to the offense's right. Here's Bohannon now going over to the left side, and then it's a missed tackle right there. Pat Fields misses the tackle. Bohannon in, and we're on the precipice of a 17-point game. And when we talked to Coach Aranda yesterday, he talked about how Gary Bohannon, after the TCU loss, took all the blame all the responsibility he said next week coach i'm gonna be better <laughs> boy was he right baylor up big big noon saturday is sponsored by dr pepper delicious ice cold dr pepper the one fans deserve and the standings in the big 12. that wall Change after this one. OU's going down Baylor. What an enormous win. They'll move to 8-2. and two. Overall, 5-2 and two in the Big 12 and keep their championship hopes alive here in the Big 12 Conference. Still 3 minutes and 57 seconds remaining. And if you weren't with us early, Caleb Williams, the starting quarterback, for Oklahoma has been taken out of the game. He had his hand stepped on in the first half. Spencer Rattler replaced him. Now Caleb Williams is back in. But let's be honest, it's been more about Baylor's defense, what they've been able to do. Gus, in that run game in the second half, Baylor's run game has rushed the ball for over 200 yards in the second half alone. And it's been largely because of their quarterback, Gary Bohannon, who has had a wonderful day a week after playing his poorest game of the year but minus one yard rushing in the second half for Baylor I mean for Oklahoma here's Mims with the catch he turns it up across the 35 up to the 37 and, and they never really stuck with it you know it was deep shots on first down Gus anytime Brooks would get loose it would go immediately back to the passing game and then the sacks of the quarterback first down sideline throw and caught Hazelwood down the sideline and Hazelwood gets all the way to the Baylor 12 a 50-yard completion Hazelwood got popped stayed on his feet this is the first life OU has had since early in the second quarter first down and 10 of the 13 Williams Williams runs it Williams trying to get to the corner and looks like he'll go out of bounds right before he got to the goal line Oklahoma no quit in him well the way that defense was playing folks I certainly sealed their fate early but I guess crazier things have happened here and it started with a quick drive all the way down the field first to Hazelwood good run there from Will Williams Kennedy Brooks in the backfield Williams out of the gun he'll run it and will not get in and there is a flag Terrell Bernard with the tackle I think there's 12 bears Illegal out substitution, there. 12 players in formation. Defense, half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. It's about the only mistake his defense has made today. Yeah, this is, I mean, the last three snaps has been out, out of the blue. OU today had averaged about four yards per snap. Remember, Oklahoma on the season averaging four.
points a game. Fifth in the nation. Eleventh in the nation in total offense. First down and goal at the one. Brooks standing next to Williams. They'll give it to Brooks. And he gets in for the touchdown. Well, it started with that long completion to Hazelwood down the left sideline. Williams came back in and all of a sudden a spark. And now OU has some hope here with 226. A couple of timeouts left. Trying to make it a 10 point game here and certainly probably an onside kick ensuing. Sooner score in a minute and 31 seconds. Burkett for the extra point. He has not had his best day. Two missed field goals and he kicked one out of bounds on a kickoff. And it's good. Four plays covering 75 yards for the Sooners, 24-14. Sportsman-like foul of the game. Andrew Rain has been called for an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty after the field of uh, the extra point. From the up cam, here's somebody hit the ground, some pointing. I, I guess that's what the flag was. And Rame gets called for it. I mean, if he, if he wanted to kick it deep with the two timeouts, he could, in theory, get the ball back with a minute 25 left, but it would be a two possession game with a minute 25 left. So he's got to go onside here? I, I would think so, yes. And here's the onside kick. Recovered by Baylor. And that's Ebner. Recovering the kick. The Bears have been prepared for everything that Oklahoma has thrown at them today. Burkett just trying to go right up the middle. And Ebner was right there, fields that on that first bounce perfectly. And it's first down, Baylor. They've had a terrific game plan today offensively, haven't they? And that quarterback, they, they mentioned to us, they said, listen, our quarterback's going to have to be big in the run game, and he absolutely has been, in particular in this second half. First down and 10 at the Oklahoma 31. OU with two timeouts left. And it's Smith. What a big day for Smith. Prior to that run, 19 carries, 142 yards. He gained six there. Timeout, Oklahoma. We'll step away for 30 seconds. And we were told that they would storm the field if Baylor won this game. Looks like the kids are getting ready. Second and four. Fumble. And Bohannon jumps on it. We'll take a look at the upcoming schedule for both of these teams. For Oklahoma and for Baylor. Kansas State a bit resurgent. Games in a row. Texas Tech obviously have made their coaching change. Something we haven't even got into. A Baylor assistant coach, Joey McGuire, ended up getting hired by Texas Tech. And he'll take over as a head coach now. So he is off to Lubbock. Sonny Cumbie is the actual head coach until the end of the year, but Joey McGuire is there. Kind of an odd scenario where they'll face each other here at the end of the year. Iowa State and then Oklahoma State. We've all talked about how this backloaded schedule for Oklahoma was going to be so difficult. They've been so good in November. Lincoln Riley is undefeated in the month of November. But they have met their match here today with this Baylor squad. They have been outstanding defensively. 
that's about as good of a game plan and execution of a game plan as I've seen in a long time. Gus, they were outstanding on that side of the ball. Oklahoma off timeouts, third down and six. And Bohannon running it. Bohannon dives forward. We'll get inside the 25. Oklahoma cannot stop the clock. Fields and Asamoa with the tackle. And if they win this game for Baylor, it will be their first win versus a top 10 opponent since 2015 when they beat Carolina. Their first win versus a top 10 opponent, opponent in Waco since 2014, K-State. And but the big one is, is beating the team that has run this conference. It would be their first win against OU since 2014. And got to give Dave Veranda a lot of credit. He had his team ready to play. And really, they dominated most of the game, Gus. This this could have been an even larger margin to this point. How, you know, how long have we seen the Baylor offense on the plus side of the 50 in Oklahoma territory? It's been all game, all game long. They've been able to run it. Bohannon hasn't been incredible throwing the ball, but he hasn't had to because they've just been able to run the football so effectively. Now almost 300 yards rushing on the day. And the quarterback with 107 yards rushing of the zone. Abram Smith with 148 yards rushing his fourth straight game over 100. And at seventh time this season. And this is this is a case study in offensive philosophy and identity. But the, Jeff Grimes, the offensive coordinator, he was so committed to that run game in the first half. And OU did a decent job against them, didn't they? I mean, they were flying around and everything was front side, front side, front side, and they had made the adjustment at halftime and they went with the misdirection, the quarterback run outside and attacking the backside of the OU defense, and it was incredible. Hankins comes in to attempt the field goal. He's missed a 51 yarder, made a 32 yarder. This one from 42 yards away. Isaiah Hankins adds insult to injury. But there is a flag. Personal foul, roughing the snapper. Defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Wow. So now Oklahoma out of timeouts. The headset is off for Lincoln Riley. He knows the Bears will take the field and line up in victory formation. From the ump cam there right over the center can't do that Oklahoma selling out and now Baylor will be in victory formation nothing sweeter than that and Gus you alluded to it Gary Bohannon he had him in field goal range late last week against TCU and threw a bad interception and he didn't run from it he told the coaches I want the responsibility I want that weight on my shoulders and I'm going to need that responsibility in order to get over it and play my best football moving forward and that responsibility paid off today. He was sensational. Gary Bohannon running the football in the second half. Made some critical throws, one to Sneed on a third down that they were able to convert, but it was his ability to attack the Oklahoma defense with his legs. Like you said, over 100 yards. You know, being the quarterback, you always got big shoes. You're going to get a lot of the credit like you're getting now, but you're also going to get a lot of the blame like he got last week. That's what makes something like this so much sweeter. Gary Bohannon, a redemption game against a top-10 opponent here at home, and this is where Baylor just thrives. They're 5-0 this year coming into this game. Margin of about 21.5 points and all those home games better here and this environment has been good today and they are ready to party on this field aren't they, they certainly are these kids are getting ready to get it in Gary Bohannon though 
What a day. When he came out of high school out of Arkansas, he was the top rated dual threat quarterback in the state of Arkansas as a senior. But there was a lot of teams. They were like, you can come here as an athlete. And this is what I love about him. He said, no, no, no. I'm a quarterback. I'm going to go where I can play quarterback. And he wound up here at Baylor. That's a decision I know Dave Aranda is happy you made. 43 seconds left. Coach Aranda still always stoic. I was going to say still stoic. This is just no doubt going to be the biggest win of his career as a head coach. And you wouldn't know it looking at him, would you? Baylor two and seven last year. They're about to improve to eight and two. Under coach Dave Aranda, who turned 45 years old earlier this season in his second year at Baylor. And you can feel the roar, folks. You can feel the rumble. You can feel it here in Waco. They're ready to sick them. One more snap. No! Baylor shocks Oklahoma. They beat him. 24 to 14, and here they come. And there's going to be one second left. They're going to all have to get off the field. may take a minute. <laughs> you ever seen anything like this? Never. This season has been crazy. Baylor is the one that called the timeout. So now they'll run off. Look at these kids. They know how to follow formation. Look at this guy. <laughs> I mean, they should have just. Only in college. It. Right. Only in college, man. Exactly. If I was Lincoln Riley, I would just. Take my team in. Got to finish the game. And OU has half their players on the sideline. Yeah. Now they're sending them into the locker room. I think Lincoln's going to tell the official, we're not coming out here. He's hot. Lincoln should be hot about that, or he should be hot about his team's inability to run the football. Especially in the second half, and he's going ballistic right now. That's just the frustration of a guy I'm seeing his whole college football yeah. playoff season was, end here in Waco, Texas. It was pretty clear they were getting, you know, on a 17 game win streak, longest in the country. We're getting a lot of respect from the playoff committee sitting there where they were ranked. And that's that's what he's fr most frustrated with right now is that he came into this season. The OU fans. Coaches everybody around that program legitimately felt like they had a team that could win a national championship. And. I just I just don't know if they've got enough on their schedule to lose this game. Even if they were to win out and win a Big 12 title, I, I just don't know if they could catapult all the way into the top four when we've got teams with a loss that are sitting in better position. I'm thinking of Oregon, thinking of Ohio State. We got an undefeated Cincinnati team. One loss, Michigan or Michigan State, Gus, which the committee already views higher than OU. And I, I think that's where the frustration is right now is that this feels like all the hopes for your season from a top end expectation. I've been dashed here on this field here in Waco. I mean, can we just 
Like get the Baylor offense out there and let them just take a knee. We shout about it later. Well, Lincoln Riley sent his Sooners into the locker room. Now it looks like he's sending some of his staff to maybe get the guys back on the field for the final snap. Have to like how many guys do they have to have? Mike Pereira joins us. Mike, what is the situation here? Well, I think it's insane. I mean, let's just get Baylor out on the field. The, the defense does not have a minimum requirement for the number of people to uh, be on the field at the snap That's so you know I, I'd like to think you know cooler heads prevailing here if we're going to go to this ridiculous one extra play to kneel down just let Baylor go out there and kneel down I, I totally agree with you Mike. I mean they're ready Baylor's ready their offense is, is sitting there right at about what the 30 yard line just ready to go out just go kneel down so snap it snap it I agree. you think Baylor you think Sna Baylor's going to take advantage and run it in for a, you know a touchdown I mean Woody Hayes would. <laughs> Woody, why'd you go for two? Because I couldn't go for three. And now here comes the Oklahoma defense to line up for this final snap. But now, listen, to Mike's point, you don't need this. And now you're going to have thousands of fans running at these 11 Sooners as they're trying to run back the length of the field. This is crazy. Okay. Got all the equipment. It'll be fine. <laughs> so here we go. The final snap. Why is he kicking the field goal? Well, the field goals unit is on the field. Taking a field goal. I don't know. Because this kid is a freshman and his confidence is pretty good. And what a way to end the game with another three points for Isaiah Hankins. This one will be from 32 yards away. I mean, yeah, is this because experience? Well, Lincoln goes ballistic, takes his team off the field, and he's like, fine, I'll kick a field goal there. Exactly. And I'll get my kicker some experience. And if he makes this, it's a confidence builder. Isaiah Hankins, 32 yards out. Exclamation point. Baylor puts another three on the board. They win the game 27 to 14. Let's get the party started in Waco. I got to ask before we get to the good stuff why the field goal that was for the big 12 tiebreaker we wanted to be over 10 smart, smart. all right had to ask you just held Oklahoma to their fewest points fewest yards under coach Riley you've been able to figure him out how did you and your defense do it today no I give a lot of credit to Ron Roberts Ron is a mentor of mine defensive staff you know we had a lot of change uh, this this particular week a lot of emotions a lot of um, Things that are outside of our control. So I give credit to Ron and staff to focus in, get the kids focused, 
kids played unbelievable hard. So proud. And you know, you pointed out before the game that Gary Bohannon was going to respond today. He led this team, particularly on the ground. What can you say about his leadership and performance? Uh, Gary's everything that we thought he was. I mean, for a kid that has worked so hard in the dark uh, by himself, maybe people believe in him, maybe not, and continue to put work in to have a moment like this, no one more deserving. I want you to look around and just take this in, Coach, because this is because of you. What does it say about the future of where this program is going? Well, I think it's, there's a lot. I think it's our players, the guys that had a chance to leave the last year and didn't and didn't leave. I think it's with our coaches, guys that stayed, guys that came, you know, looking at last year, going, what is going on? It's with our administration, continue to give support. It's um, it's a lot of people with their hands in this. You go enjoy. I love the smile. Congrats. Thank you. Dave Aranda, true to his stoic form as his team defeats Oklahoma 27 to 14. Partner, your thoughts on this one? I got to tell you, that was one of the great defensive performances that I've seen since covering college football. To take that offense and do what they did to them. Caleb Williams, no chance. Rattler, no chance. Why? Because the Baylor defense, Dave Aranda and Ron Roberts, and that defense, they were sensational today. What a huge win for the Baylor Bears. Congratulations. All right, the final score here Baylor 27, Oklahoma 14. We'll have more college football coverage from McLean Stadium with Rob and the boys after this with Jenny Tab and Joel Clapp. Gus Johnson saying so long from Waco.